Hello, I'm Steve and welcome to our channel Patio Heat, where we provide visual concepts of infrared heating as well as tips for ideal patio comfort. Check out our patioheat.com website for sales and more information. Kindly consider tapping that like button if you find this video useful as it helps others find our channel. Now let's get heating. All right, so here we have this residential application. This uh, customer had mentioned that they're looking at uh, heating up two areas, one back here and then one over here. And um, so let's just go right into the drawing that I have here. And the drawing I have, um, we'll go into the dimensions. And I, again, I'll say that we're just going to heat up this one area here and this area over here. And so we have this span here of 10 foot 9. We have a height of 9 foot 1 and a half to the lower end of this beam here. And then, um, you know, we got these two measurements up here, 5 and a half, 9 and a quarter inch beams. And then we have some uh, fans that are located in the central uh, section of the uh, spaces here. Um, also this 9.6 to 10.5 uh, area here, so 1911 uh, feet. So let's see if there's anything else. Um, now a lot of this um, structure here, I don't have the exact dimensions, so this information is just going to be um, just a uh, rendering rather than a actual drawing, so um, just bear that in mind. Now they do have this couch here, and behind that couch there's located a doorway. The doorway hinges appear as if they are doors that swing out, and that's why I have this doorway out in the open right now, because I do have to take that in, into consideration. And let's see if there's anything else that we need to talk about. I think that's about it. So um, let's go ahead and go with the uh, first uh, option. First option I have here would be to place a couple of the uh, Infratech um, uh, slimline models, so the SL4024 model, 4000 watt, 240 volts each. And over here you can see, if you know, the table's in the center here. There's no way I'm going to be able to get enough um, heat from one side versus the other, you know, with the beam sitting here. So if we want to hold, heat up this whole entire area, and I noticed that the um, client also had some table uh, components over here so they probably would use this whole area at certain times of the year but at other times of the year they might just pull the table out to the left side here for instance or inwards um, something of that nature and then there is a door over here that I noticed I didn't know how, uh, how know how the uh, door physically comes out or in so that this heater here might have to be um, eliminated if it swings out and the reasons why behind that is that we do have clearances that we need to meet and we can't have a doorway that swings out below, you know, below the heater and then if the door is left open then of course you know, we have a fire uh, hazard such as this over here for instance. So um, just bear that in mind. Now if the doors go inwards then that's a whole different um, ball game. We don't have to worry about that uh, specific uh, issue. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, clearance above the heaters. So you can see with the spans here I have. Now, I didn't get the actual measurements of each individual span. and um, But I, what I did get was the measurements between the um, two beams here. And visually looking at some of the images I got, I could see there was six um, beams going across. So I evenly placed those throughout that space. And with that in mind, I do have enough clearance to put a slimline unit between the two, so this would be your slimline, um, five inch long heater here, and then we have six inches of clearance that goes six inches from this edge over to here, and then six inches from this edge over here. I do have these at a 10 degree angle. Now with a 10 degree angle, you see I'm just barely touching this um, clearance issue here, so you know that's something that we have to keep in mind. Um, you know, I, got, I have like maybe an eighth of an inch or something of that nature. Now that's technically fine. But you may have to move, you know, move it depending on what the true dimensions of the span is. You may have to move it to nine degree angle, something of that nature. But in any case, we do meet the clearances above and around um, the back. We just have to be kind of careful of how we angle the heater so that we have um, the clearances below. So clearances below, just so you know, is 18 inches from the edge of the heater out and then down 36 inches and around to the other side, 18 inches and that's also true on the ends. And that's why it's also important to know what this dimension is here, this 9.6, um, 9.6 center to center. And that should allow us to have plenty of room between 
the beams in order to um, locate these units. All right, and let's go ahead and look at the uh, footprint of heat. So let's see here. I'm going to turn off the clearances real quick. And so with um, so we could you know like I said before we could either use four heaters or um, the two units only. If the two units is are the two units is all we're going to be looking at, then of course, like I said before, you have to move this chair in accordingly, depending on the season, how much heat you want to heat up the uh, chairs and tables. And um, if not, then four units is the answer for this whole application. And of course, over here, I just have the two units. Now they're centered within the span of um, from uh, actually it's centered within the span here. So I've located everything in line down the row here, including the fans. And um, with the fans being said here, let's go ahead and turn that back on just so you can see the uh, clearances. There we go. So with the fans, I, I have this heater here moved out a little bit further than I would probably want because of the doors. I was just trying to see if we can uh, manage that, but again, um, can't manage that even moving the heaters as close to the fan as possible. Um, that's why um, this here heater will probably have to be eliminated. And when I do eliminate the heater, obviously you can see the only area that we're able to heat up is this space right here. Um, now there's a different option that we can look at and I'm just going to show you this here real quick. So the other option would be to place um, a couple of heaters underneath this beam. I can't place it between the um, fan blade and the beam here. It has to be placed on the lower side of that beam, which is probably not something that is going to work out well. Um, and you can see the footprint of heat. You know, I'd have to angle it slightly, angle this one slightly in to get this whole space inside here heated. Um, and if you did that on this end over here, obviously we have an issue with regards to the um, this beam here is at a slight angle from the rest of them, so the heat ray is not going to be traveling out to the out this distance is, um, like you might think. So, and then of course we do have still that issue with the doorway, so we have to have it at least 18 inches away from this edge here to the starting point of the fan or uh, starting point of the heater. If we place it along this beam here, and it just wouldn't work out well. Um, so in any case, this can be done but it's not something I would recommend. So let's just go back to what I do recommend, which is placing a unit such as this. And if you can get that other unit in here, then that's great. But if not, you're gonna have to just um, compromise some way and, and use the heater this way here. So, all right, well, I hope this has helped. If you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application and you would like us to review your plans, please send your information to designs at patioheat.com. I'm Steve. Thank you very much. Don't forget to hit that like button. That's what really helps us out with the YouTube algorithms and it also shows that you appreciate the work that we're doing here for you. Thank you very much. Have a great day.